Hey, Brewtubers, we're here brewing my triple. Um, we finished the, ma the, the 60 minute mash. So while the mash out water finishes heating up, uh, as you probably hear it in the background, we're going to boil off and collect our first runnings. And that's the mistake I've been making every time is not boil off and collecting the first runnings before mash out. So I'm going to use this, use this pan to, um, to uh, pour over the boil off to make sure that you know, there's no grain pieces in it. So I'm going to collect it and just put the wort in this measuring cup and you know, there's some grain in there. Not running too bad, there's still, there is definitely some grain in there. It's actually running pretty clear because I put a bunch of rice holes in. As you can see, it's already running pretty clear, which means the rice holes are doing their job and it's a nice light color like we hoped it would be. It might get a little darker once you boil it and caramelize it, but um, and we're going to do one more and then collect our first running in this bucket. Really nice gold color here. It's a little bit of orange or red in it, but we'll see what the final color is. In the end. All right. So now that we have uh, the green bed set, I can um, I can start collecting my first running. So let's open the valve part of the way. That all the way and then start collecting our first runnings. Slow it down just a bit. Alright, guys, so we're ready to uh, sparge. I have 168 degree water up here in this bucket that I wrapped in an old winter blanket, I mean summer blanket, and I tied bungee cords around it to maintain the temp. Um, and then I have my cool sprayer thing that I made, the cool, just a like cheap sprayer and high temp hosing to sparge the grains. And then I put tin foil in there with holes in it, heavy duty tin foil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bore off again over the tin foil, and then once it runs clear, I'll start using the three gallons, or a little over three gallons, of sparge water. Um, so it's already running pretty clear. I'm gonna do this a couple just a couple times. Alright guys, so I finished boral offing, so now I'm gonna start the sparge. So the first time I'm using this contraption. And as you see here, it's spraying, but I have to slow down just a bit the trickle. And I'm going to open up the valve. I keep it it's trickle, just trickling nice and slow. So I open the valve all the way. It's not going to work. So. Stop it now because now there's a lot of water over the grain bed, so I'm gonna just let it drain a little bit and just just open the valve for the sprayer when I feel that it needs to um <coughs> and we're just gonna monitor this bucket so I can collect my uh first five gallons or turn it my way so that I can see um, how it's doing. Alright guys, so as you see we're maintaining about an inch or so over the grain bed. I'm just spraying the tin foil with water every time I think it's getting low and I think we need to add a little more now actually. So every time I see it getting low, I just 
just spray it a little bit and uh, maintain that that little bit over the grain bed. Alright, shut it off. Okay, so basically that's what I'm doing. I'm letting it seep through the tin foil into the grain bit into the grain and into my bucket, which I'm keeping I'm keeping the spigot about halfway open so that it doesn't drain too quickly. Because I don't want to collapse the grain bed. That's another way to collapse the grain bed, either draining too quickly or not having enough water over the grain bed or a little bit of both. So and we're gonna trying to get we collected five gallons and now we the Beerson says about eight. So we're gonna collect eight and uh or seven point nine something and uh and then we have the first five gallons going up to a boil so we're gonna add in two more and then as it we get a vigorous boil we'll so I'll add a bit by bit of that last gallon just to make sure we get full efficiency out of the war. Hey brew tuber, so I took a gravity reading of the pre-boil gravity and my whole rinse thing uh, I did amazing um, and doing the right mash out. Um, according to my refract time, which I'll try to focus for you here, you see we got about 1065, 1064, something in that range. Um, and Beer Smith wanted me to get um, wanted me to get 1066, um, 7.9 four gallons. We got just about that, um, so which means we got over 80 percent efficiency from the mash, which is amazing. Um, we might not get the original gravity that they want us to because, like, I haven't been getting that recently because of you know not using propane, and using my stove with two burners. But we're off to a really good start, even though we had a slightly stuck sparge towards the end because of the wheat. Um, but we did get our volume, we did get our pre boil gravity, so we're off to a great start. And uh, we'll be back when uh, we're going to add the first hops. Cheers. Alright, guys, so it's time for the 60 minute hop edition. My hop bag that I used for my barley wine is still a bit dirty. Um, I rinsed it out after I brewed the IPA with my brother, but I didn't end up soaking in OxyClean and really cleaning it. So I'm just going to dump the hops in and, you know, my pickup tube at the bottom of the pot isn't totally uh, facing down. So if I, once I, if I whirlpool for a few minutes towards the end, which I'll probably do, um, then hopefully I won't pick up too much pellet tube. But um, let's just dump in the ounce of Hallertau hops. And, uh, yeah, that's the 60 minute hop edition. We see that, as usual, that made it go just a little crazy, but not too much. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the next edition isn't for another 40 minutes to the 20 minute mark. Um, so you have a 20, a 10, and a 5, just to give it nice hop flavor and aroma. Um, and I have them all out here weighed out. So at 20 minutes, we'll have 3 quarters of an ounce of size. At, at uh, 10 minutes, we'll have 3 quarters of an ounce of Hallertau. And at 5 minutes, we'll have an ounce of size. So just alternating um, alternating between size and Hallertau. Um, so yeah, I haven't cleaned out the mash on yet, but I'm just chilling here with some friends who are helping me brew. So uh, we're just going to keep on trucking and uh, I'll be back for the next top edition. Alright guys, it's time for the next tw the 20 minute hop edition of 3 quarters of an ounce of Saz hops. Uh, just, as I said, we're not using my hop bags, so I'm just adding it in. And that's that. So, we have two more hop editions and I'm slowly adding in the wort. Um, so now that I added in the next hop edition and there's only 20 minutes left in the boil, I'm going to hand the camera over to my trusty friend Yaron to uh, film while I add in more wort. Alright, so we have the rest of the wort in there. Um, it's not really causing the boil, it's only causing the boil to calm down a tiny bit but it's still rolling so I'm not going to restart the clock now uh, but in about 10 minutes 
I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut off the flame, add in the candy sugar, and then turn the flame and bring it back up to the boil. And then once it gets back up to the boil, then we'll take the 0.75 ounce of Haller Tout for the 10 minute edition and put it in just to start the clock again. But, um, but for now, we're just gonna let it boil for another 10 minutes or so, maybe a little more just to get back up to a really rolling boil and our big, more vigorous boil. And, uh, and then once that 10 minutes is up, again, we'll add this, turn off the flame, add the sugar, and then bring it up to a boil again and add the 10 minute pop. So we'll be back as soon as possible. All right guys, so it's time to add in the candy sugar. It's a little past 10 minutes but I'll readjust my clock uh, at the time. So I'm gonna slowly add in a little bit of sugar, mix it around so it dissolves and go bit by bit. So that uh, just slowly, so it doesn't splash. I'm just trying to prevent it from burning at the bottom like you would with malt extract. I don't, it's not as sticky obviously as a malt extract. Um, but since this isn't big pieces of sugar, I want to, I don't want it to burn, so I shut off the flame. So, we're going to act, slowly add this in, and I'll come back, like I've been doing with each step. So, we're going to come back, once I've gotten the one, finished this, adding the work chiller in, and then um, and then bring it back up to a boil to add the 10 minute and then the 5 minute hop addition of course the Camden tablet I mean not the Camden tablet the world flock tablet and the yeast nutrients so we'll be back in a few minutes right. now we're back up to a boil as you see it nice and rolling there so um, it's not as vigorous yet but uh, it's good enough I should use my thermometer and it's about 208 degrees so it's close enough I'm going to add in the three quarters of an ounce of Haller Tau, wait another five minutes, and then add in the last hop addition, which I mentioned before is a whole ounce of Saz hops. So, all right, guys, time for the last hop addition of an ounce here, as you see, of Saz hops. Um, these are very classic for the style, as are the Haller Tau, but Saz are known for being in pretty much every Belgian beer. Um, so, especially triples and saisons, so, maybe not quads and doubles, but definitely triples and saisons, Belgian pale ale, stuff like that, on strong ales. Alright guys, so we have the work chilled down, um, it's going to warm up a tiny bit, obviously sitting at room temperature, but I'm not pitching till for another few hours, because I really want the yeast to be, the starter to be going for at least... 18 to 24 hours and I'll show you the starter in a minute uh, but as you see here we have our five gallons or maybe a touch over five gallons in my six gallon better bottle um, with a lot of star fan star sand foam on top and a piece of tin foil just covering it to make sure nothing built falls in um, we have a bit of a discrepancy with when it comes to the the gravity this here have my refractometer because on my Hydrometer it's saying 1094 around 1094 but uh yeah so I don't know if you could see that but um but on the hydrometer it's around 1094 um so and then in my height but in the refractometer it's in the refractometer it's about 1086 or 1085 so you know it's a bit of a discrepancy either way I hit my numbers but um, we'll have to see which number I go by here's my two liter yeast starter the, way, the reason I have it set up the way it did is because um, for some reason I've heard it's a problem with with a thing with Belgian yeasts 
that it kept foaming over and pushing my foam stopper out. So what I've been doing is I still have it on the stir plate, as you see, but I'm only like turning the stir plate on for a few seconds every hour or so, um, just so I don't lose any more yeast, because I don't know if you could see, but it's like just below the 2,000 milliliter mark or 2 liter mark. Um, with the, then when the, once that foam settles, I'm sure it'll, you know, it'll, uh, it'll give me a little more liquid, but, you know, I don't want to lose any really much more, um, because my gravity is so high. Um, even though this yeast is very alcohol tolerant, they said you can go up to like 9 or 10% or more. Um, so I'm going to let this go for at least 18, if not more hour, 24 hours, you know, and then we'll see, and then I'll aerate and pitch. Um, even if I have to, you know, I didn't actually, you know, craziness, you know, I didn't end up pitching till four in the morning, Saturday, like Saturday night into Sunday, because I got back late from New Jersey on Saturday night. So I, had, you know, I had to pop the smack pack and then make the ward and then it wasn't cooling down fast enough. So I just put it in the fridge and went to bed. And luckily I woke up on time to where the yeast wasn't you know, out of the fridge for too long. And then I, uh, pitched it you know, with the smack pack of the Trappist High Gravity Yeast, um, 3787 from Y Yeast, and it did inflate this time, unlike my British L2, so I know it's a very healthy yeast. So I'm just going to keep doing that until, you know, I go to sleep, and then, uh, you know, l rousing it, letting the, the foam settle, rousing it again a little while later, and then I'll aerate and pitch. <laughs> All right, guys, so the yeast art has been going for about 19 hours, maybe a little bit above. still see some activity in there, so I'm not going to decant anything off. I know this really adds about half a gallon into the fermenter, which is already has just over five gallons in it. But um, even if I bring it up to about the six-gallon mark, um, I want them you know, make sure that I get all the yeast because it's really cloudy in there and there's probably a lot of yeast in suspension still and there's foam there which, you know, it has yeast trapped in it so I'd rather not lose any of this yeast and it's not going to really dilute the wort because it already has tons of yeast and alcohol in it. So Alright guys, so as you see here, I have my hanger contraption attached to my, my drill so I'm going to go ahead and aerate the wort. Alright, that looks sufficient to me. So, I'm going to take my funnel out of the sanitizer. Nice and sanitized. And stick it in the top there. I'm just going to go ahead and pour the starter, most of the starter in. kick up, stir it to kick up all the yeast from the bottom. You can see it's more of a milky color now because I just kicked up all that yeast from the bottom. And And now you can see the stir bar is stuck to the magnet, so I didn't lose it. So now that the yeast is in, I can even smell that this starter smells a little spicy because the yeast from from the yeast, spiciness of the yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in, and uh, once we get fermentation started, I'll. Shoot another clip to see, tell you how long it took to start. All right, cheers. Wow.
beer's chugging away after only about nine hours. I know it started earlier because I woke up a little while ago and woke up to hearing it chugging away. I don't know exactly what time. There's no way to, for me to know what time exactly it took off. I pitched the yeast about 11, 15 p.m. before I went to sleep. And then, uh, so, and then at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, now it's about 8 o'clock. It's ready chugging like crazy and building up a nice foam on the start of the Krausen on top. I've heard Belgian beers ferment out really quickly, um, so I'm not surprised that since I hit my numbers and um, I, uh, yeah, I hit my numbers and I pitched a nice big yeast starter, a nice active yeast starter, and I pitched the whole thing, so we're about the six gallon mark now. Just like I was with my barley wine, um, that I'm not surprised that it took off so quickly it, with all the nutrients in the yeast starter and the new and the yeast nutrient that I added, and all the sugar from the candy sugar and uh, and the malts. So um, yeah, so I, if I had if I you know I'll try to get another status check before Homebrew Wednesday because I'm checking this on Monday morning. Um, so, um, after about nine hours, it's chugging away pretty hard, and I'm really excited for, uh, this Belgian triple, uh, that I brewed up. Cheers. And happy homebrewing. Hey guys, so I was gonna wait to film another fermentation update till Wednesday morning, so I can give you as close to, you know, by posting homebrew Wednesday as possible, but I open this is I'm filming this on Tuesday morning instead. Maybe I'll film one more, but I'm not sure. Um, but there's a big difference between even when I went to check it on Monday night. Um, but now the Krausen has risen all the way up into the neck and is blowing off the, t the tube and through the blow off tube and made the sanitizer solution a very milky white color um, which is weird because it was a lot different color with my barley wine but I guess since this is a light colored beer that's also going to be light color um, but there's stuff getting blown through there into there not just what I occasionally see like a, a black or a brown fleck from hops or something going through there um, so instead of the constant bubbling there's a So now it's the constant bubbling, but you know, every once in a while there's a gurgle and stuff goes through the blow off too. But uh, I'm not, now that I've opened it, I was a little worried when I heard the gurgles from outside the fridge, but now that I see that it's just because the fermentation really took off, I'm not too worried. So I'm going to go ahead, close up the fridge again, and uh, yeah. But actually, one thing before I go. I'm keeping, as you see here, it's at 20.6, which is like about 69 degrees or so. I'm keeping the fridge between 19.9, so just below 68, and 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 20.9, which is just below just below uh, 69.8. Yeah, 21 to 60, so it's like just below 68 and just below 70. Um, um, just so that, um, you know, I'll get the spiciness, um, for keeping it between 68 and 70, um, some people would say 66 and 68, um, but, um, I wanted to, you know, create some spiciness in the beginning, and then next week, I'll ramp it up slowly, um, you know, to maybe 70, like, you know, 71, 72, maybe even 73, um, the yeast goes up to 75, so, um, yeah, so next week, maybe I'll ramp it up to maybe max 74, because I really don't want to, you know, go beyond that 75, even though some people would, all right, cheers. Mm -hmm.